Welcome back. Today we're gonna to make riso al forno. It's a delicious baked rice dish. Here's all the ingredients. Let's get into it right now. So the first thing we did was we grated scamorza cheese, which is right here. I have two cups of it roughly. This is such a delicious cheese. Now this is smoked. Uh, the last time I made this, we used the regular. The regular one has a lot of flavor, but let me tell you, the smoked is even more flavorful. Now, it might be difficult for you to find. If you can't uh, get it, you can use mozzarella or smoked mozzarella. In addition to the scamorza, we have Pecorino Romano. I have three quarter cup. This is just the pre-graded stuff from the store. It's still Locatelli. Makes it a lot easier for me and it tastes just as good. We have two 28 ounce cans of plum tomatoes. I have one crushed and I have one whole. I'll just crush these uh, with my meat masher after when we brown our meat. I have three ounces of tomato paste right here. I have two cups of frozen peas that I just put in the microwave for like a minute and a half just to kind of defrost them a little bit. One medium onion that we just did a dice. Five cloves of garlic that we sliced thinly. Two anchovies, which are gonna give it a really great boost of flavor. Two and a half cups of Arborio rice I have right here. You could use regular rice. My grandmother used to make a similar dish, dish to this, not as involved. Uh, and she would use, I believe, regular rice, like white rice. She didn't, she wasn't using this. And then finally, uh, for the meat, the meat itself, I have two pounds of ground chuck. People keep asking in the comments, why does the meat look like that, like a volcano? That's just how the place does it. I mean, in Tara, right? Other, it's like a bunch of stores that do it, right? It's not just one place, right? You find this in other places, yeah, they every, sell it that way. Every store, that's how they sell it. Yeah. That's a good question. But a lot of comments would be like, why did you shape your meat like that? I would never shape the meat like that. It would be impossible for me to do that. <laughs> That'd be insane. Oh, and I have basil. See my nice basil? It's so nice. I take it, um, I cut it off and I just put it in water and put it by a sunny window. All right, we're gonna make the sauce first. We always make two videos. We never make one video. We never film one video. It's not efficient for us. So we just filmed um, ratatouille before this. I said in the ratatouille video, use a Dutch oven, a high wall Dutch oven. It's better, but I used this pan instead. I have two of them. I'm doing the same thing here again for the sauce. It's just to show you how to do it instead of if I use a Dutch oven, it's very hard for me to get a lens in there, so you'll see. Just so you understand, I'm gonna heat this pan up to about a six out of 10. Wanna get it nice and hot here, and then we're gonna do our volcano meat. Now, vegetable oil would probably be better here than olive oil, but we're gonna just put a tiny bit down. Though, we're using ground chuck, and it will release a lot of its fat. And then I'm gonna add in the meat right now. Just spread the meat out. All right, so it's releasing a ton of fat here, and I have my best tool in the world, my meat masher. All right, we'll just let this brown until there's no more pink. I'm gonna lower the heat, first of all, down to about a four out of 10, like about medium, and let's get this out. Now I'm using a metal spoon hitting that pan. So call the ambulance or whatever. I'm using a slotted spoon here, so I'm trying to keep most of the fat in there. You know, we're gonna remove this. You don't have to get every single speck of beef out of here. Try to do the best you can without splashing yourself completely. You know, and if you want, you could try to drain that back in there, which is the smarter thing to do, like that. Oh boy. Just lower it even more if it's, go if it's too high. Let's just put the onion in first. And let's just let these onions cook until they get soft, okay? So really, we're gonna flavor that oil. Everything's gonna come together. We're gonna have the most amazing sauce. Just so we know, like, all of this in here, all this fat, which is fat, it's not water. If it was water, it would be not here anymore. It'd be gone, it'd be evaporated. This is all from the meat, and there's still more over there. So you didn't need to put any extra olive oil in. You're gonna have plenty of fat here. All right, so that's been about five minutes. You can let these go a little bit more. That's how they look. Gonna add all that garlic in now. I'll let that go for another minute. The anchovy completely dissolves. I can't even see it anymore. If you want hot red pepper, uh, add it in. I definitely do. So I'm gonna do about a half a teaspoon. Okay, about that much. Right into that oil. Tara, you wanna come back in? You can come back in. Come on. Come in, come through. Good. Thank you. All right, so I added that tomato paste in. Uh, recipe says three ounces. This looks more like two ounces, so I didn't measure correctly from the can, but this is all right. 
I'm gonna fry this paste into the oil with the garlic, the onion, the anchovy, the hot pepper. It's gonna be amazing. You can tell it's amazing. When you start with this, how can it not be amazing? I knew I was forgetting something. You're supposed to return the meat to the pan when you put the paste in, so we'll do that now. I just made this a few days ago. Just wrote up the recipe and everything, and I forget. We do two or three recipes a week for the website, and we also have the YouTube video coming out for you. So everything kind of blends together. And then we also have the podcast now too. So that's it. It's been five minutes with the paste and the meat. This flavor is amazing. I put a little bit of salt on there when I was talking to Tara. You can taste this right now to see if it's good. You don't have to. Uh, I'm gonna put in the tomatoes. So two 28 ounce cans of plum tomatoes. Recipe says hand crushed or blender pulsed. So if you had, you know, like whole ones like this, you can hand crush them or you can pulse them in like a blender or you can see, look at this, this makes it easy. See the basil right there? They put it right on the bottom. So now I can just remove it. Why am I removing that basil? The basil served its purpose. It might've been in a can for two years. We're gonna put our new nice, just pulled out of the ground basil. Okay, so now what do you do? Jim, you threw in these whole tomatoes. Well, use your meat masher. Now you can just do that. Now, I said in the beginning, use a Dutch oven here. I'm like at max capacity. I think my meat masher broke up those tomatoes fairly well. And now I'll just stir everything together. So this is a very thick, thick sauce, you know, ragu, call it a ragu, even though it doesn't have the carrot and the celery, but this will be perfect for what we need it for in our rice. Now, I, I do want to make one caveat here. If you're that type of person, which you, there's a high, high likelihood that you are, because if you're, if you're watching this type of content, you might want more sauce on the side. So all you have to do is just add another 28 ounce can, and then you'll be able to save some of the sauce all right, I'm gonna bring this off to the side now and keep it at a simmer and let's cook our rice. I have a pot here, large enough, probably a three quart pot, maybe a four, I don't know. It's big enough to do the two and a half cups of rice because I already did it in this pot, so I know. Uh, I'm just gonna put some salt in, not that much, about 1% salt level. Okay, and that's our rice. So set the timer and you only need to cook your rice for eight minutes. So we're cooking it till it's very, uh, it's gonna still be very hard. We're just giving it a little bit of a head start. I mean, if you were to do this without cook, par cooking the rice right now, it would take longer and you'd have to make a wetter sauce because it would need more liquid to cook it. As your rice is cooking now, preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Set one rack to the middle level and set the other rack about to the two, two notches below the top. All right, it's been eight minutes on that rice. All you gotta do is just drain the rice and you can rinse it underwater to cool it a little bit. You don't have to get it super cold. It's not a big deal. We're gonna mix it right away with super hot sauce. That's how you drain rice. Okay, here's our sauce that I had simmering on the side. Recipe says simmer it for at least 20 minutes. You don't have to go crazy with the simmering. You don't have to reduce too much liquid out of it. The rice is gonna absorb a lot of it. This is the consistency of it. Now let's taste it. Let's make sure the sauce is really good. That is good. I'm gonna put a tiny bit more salt, even though I probably shouldn't with all that pecorino and scamores are going in. Here's the rice. Here's the peas. That's two cups of thawed peas. Here's a quarter cup of packed basil that I lightly chopped. We have three quarter cup of pecorino. I'm gonna use half of that. So let's just eyeball it, okay? And then half of the scamorza. We have a lot of sauce here. I don't know exactly how many cups this will make, but what I want you to do is leave three cups. So put all but all the, all the sauce in here except for three cups. And you know what? Initially, you could have just mixed that rice a little bit with the cheese before you added the sauce, but it doesn't really matter. So this rice is hard right now. It's just, so let's keep going until we get to three cups of sauce left in the pan. Let's mix all of this together. It's just a, a mass, a mass of goodness. Just make sure you mix it well. Like I just had a white, just a completely white rice spot like there. So really do your best. This is similar flavors to the arancini. 
Yes, yes, it, that's exactly. It's kind of like a rice ball, like that's being baked. Yeah. Like a massive one. Oh, that's smoked, smoked scamorza. Okay, so oven 375, middle rack. This is about a nine by 13, maybe a little bit bigger. I just got it from Costco, this uh, stoneware set. Remember, we have three cups of the sauce left, so let's put down about half of that. So about one and a half cups here. And just go like this to distribute it. Okay, and then let's get it all in there. Now I'm doing it a simple way. I suppose you could like do layers with like, if you made like chunks of the scamorza, then you put more rice and which we've done in like, I think we did it in a big ziti, but it's so simple this way and pretty sure it's gonna taste exactly the same. I like to just be a little fancy here. So I'm gonna put a little bit of sauce and I'm gonna save just a tiny bit there. All right, a little bit of sauce, scamorza. Just, just try to evenly distribute it. The remaining, what you have, I probably didn't probably put more inside of it. Okay, and then the pecorino. I like to put a little bit more of the sauce on top because then it like, it shows through when the cheese melts. You'll see, you'll see what I mean when it comes out of the oven. What do you think of that, Tara? It looks so good and it smells fabulous. Yeah. I put another roll of paper towels over there for you. Okay, thank you. You're running low. What I recommend you do is, because your oven's gonna be a little different. It just will be. I'm cooking in not a convection oven. It's just a conventional oven. Check it at 30 minutes, maybe even around 28. Dig your fork in there, test your rice for doneness. If your rice is hard, just throw it back in the oven for another five minutes. Check again. If it's still hard, throw it back in the oven. It's as simple as that. It truly is. Because maybe you didn't boil your rice exactly eight minutes like I told you to. It needs to rest like any baked pasta. It needs to rest for at least 10 minutes. It's been the summertime, so James hasn't been uh, available much. You've been going to basketball camp the whole time, right? Yeah. Why don't you uh, try? You were just saying, what, this is better than the- This looks better than the last one that you made. I like how the cheese like hates like that. <sighs> what's in it? So what's in it? Mm -hmm. So it's a meat sauce. There's uh, a cheese called scamorza and pecorino, but the scamorza I, we use this time is smoked. So it has a little bit of a smoke. I'm gonna flavor. taste that. That's what I was asking. Do you like it or mm -hmm. not? Yeah. yeah. It's different, a little different than last time. It, depending on which scamorza you use, and obviously if you can't get it, then if you use mozzarella or you could use smoked mozzarella, that will give you a difference too. This is delicious. I'm really hard. I'm gonna try one bite with the basil. Yeah, that's your garnish, but you know, I felt like you definitely can eat it too. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of basil inside of it already. My mom just made your stuffed eggplant and she couldn't find scamorza, so the person at the cheese counter told her to use provolone. Provolone, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Delicious. All right, Roger Wright, do the ranking. Don't let me see. I have a good feeling about this one though. Really good <laughs> feeling. James's facial expressions have me cracking up. Oh, shoot. Show them what I got. I think you can already guess it's a 10. My zero is a little bigger than the one. What did you like about it? I really like the smoke, the smoky flavor. It like, it like added a lot. The meat sauce was perfect. What kind of meat was it? Chuck, just chuck, Gra ground, you know, ground beef, fatty ground beef with peas and uh, two types yeah. of cheese. Everything's just in it that it needs. I love it. James, can I ask you one more question? If you could, ch if you had to choose between baked ziti or lasagna, like a baked pasta dish, and the baked rice, which would you pick? Be honest. Those are that's hard, but pick yeah. one. Pick one. Probably, probably like a super good like baked ziti. Okay, really? I thought he was gonna say lasagna. I Okay. This is so good. <laughs> Honestly, I would just eat all three. <laughs> That's the right answer. That is the right answer. Thank you, James. We'll see you guys next time.